I'll be honest, I thought Nostrum was gonna win. <laughs> Hello there, you magnificent bunch. I hope you're well and I hope you're ready for one of my favorite Meshuga songs. And the winner of last month's poll, Do Not Look Down. By the way, I finally have a Patreon page up. More about that at the end of the video and, of course, a new poll with three more song options for you to choose from for next month's Meshuga video. Alright, let's do it. As usual with Meshuga songs, we have a few sections to look at and we'll start with the obvious one, the intro riff, which lasts for almost two minutes, what the hell. I hear this riff as three separate chunks. So the first chunk is in seven, The second one is in 4 and the last one is in 6 Together they create a 17 beat phrase and for the sake of this video we'll call these 16th notes if we dial this into our guest versus host table, the 17 riff will be the guest. The host, 4-4, four four, will be represented in a few ways, but before we dive into that, I'll need to go over the layout of the first two minutes of the song. The first three sections of the song, the intro, verse 1 and verse 2, are all shaped in the same manner. So they're all 12 bars long, where the last four bars act like a mini climax for that section. So for the intro, the last four bars are where the drums open up. And then in the verses, the key drops from G to F sharp. But in those last four bars, it goes up to G. So that serves kind of like a mini climax for that section. So here are the 12 bars of the intro. The first eight, and the last four where the drums open up. Then we have verse 1, so we have 8 bars in F, and then 4 bars in G sharp, and the same goes for verse 2. This looks like a pretty straightforward form for a song, and it is, but now we need to integrate that 1716 riff over all of it. So, here we go. Notice that as I do this, the riff has a different starting point every time which makes sense when you try to repeat a 17-beat phrase over a 16-beat pulse. I'm also alternating colors just to make the starting points of these riffs more visible. But take a good look at these harmonic changes. As you can see, they appear in the middle of the riff. This riff actually starts here. This one starts here. This one starts here. And this one starts here. So the melodic content of these patterns actually changes mid-riff. This is very important to understand. So the rhythmic nature of the riff, those three chunks that create the bigger 17 pattern, do not restart when the harmony changes. They stay loyal to the guest side. So the rhythmic pattern keeps going as usual, while the melodic representation of that pattern changes according to the harmony, which is on the host side, the four which means that we'll have riffs that would start in one chord and end on a different chord, because sometimes the harmony changes mid-riff. And if we go back to the guest versus host table, we can see this pretty clearly. The rhythmic element of the riff is on the guest side, and the harmonic slash melodic content is on the host side. As for the instruments, guitars and bass are all playing on the guest side. The drums shift sides. They start by being all on the guest side, and once they open up, the snare and hi-hat or crash move to the host side. Note that in the intro, nothing is on the host side. Nothing. It's only us and the non-existing metronome, which I'll provide to you because I'm such a gentleman. Here we go.
Okay, main riff is done, but we have a few more. Next up is the guitar solo. It's a short section, it's eight bars, and the main riff here is actually the initial intro riff minus two beats. Instead of seven, four, and six, we have five, four, and six. So instead of 17, we have 15. But notice this cool thing. If the whole song up to this point was 36 bars long, with that 1716 riff circling around it, this bar, bar 37, where the guitar solo starts, isn't a place where the 17 riff naturally aligns on beat 1. But instead of cutting the riff and starting the new one on the downbeat, they just wait for the last one to finish and then start the new riff. And this happens to happen on the end of beat 1. So you're gonna hear something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, pom, 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 something like that. The riff structure for the guitar solo looks like this. This 15 repeats three and a half times, followed by an added tail. And then again, three and a half times of the riff in 15, followed by a slightly different tail. Here we go. Okay, two down, two more to go. Riff three. So the length of this section is also eight bars. The riff looks like this, and it totals at 26 16th notes, which means I'll be referring to it as 13 eighth notes. It's just easier to count. So eight bars have a total of 64 eighth notes, which means we can almost fit five full repeats of this phrase, because 13 times five is 65, but we need to get to 64. But catch this, the riff is constructed in a way that has an accented hit right before the ending. And this beat happens to magically land on beat one of the next section. It sounds amazing. Check it out. Okay, last riff, riff number four. This last but not least riff spans over 16 bars, but it's shorter. It's 13 16th notes long, and it looks like this. So 16 bars equals 256 16th notes, which means we can fit um, 19 full repetitions of this riff, and then we'll have nine more beats left to fill up. So we'll just use the first nine beats of the riff, because why not? We did it. Man, this song is so groovy. I know some people prefer their earlier material, but man, this album is one of my favorite Meshuga albums. Okay, so for next month Meshuga songs, here are the options. Stenga, The Exquisite Machinery of Torture, and Dancers to a Discordant System. Man, I'm happy I'm not the one choosing. 
Lastly, I want to announce that I have launched a Patreon page. For those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a membership-based platform that helps creators like myself get paid for what we do. I'm sure some of you think that YouTube content creators make millions of dollars for every video. And some of them do, but my videos all get demonetized, and for a good reason. I post music education videos, and for that I have to use, well, the music. And because I don't own the rights to basically any of these songs, I don't earn money from this channel. I can easily pitch shift the song or slow it down, just to confuse the YouTube algorithm. But I rather not. I prefer you hear the song in the way that the artist intended. Each of these videos take between 10 to 30 hours for me to produce, from researching songs, writing the scripts, visualizing the concepts, filming, recording and editing, which I do all by myself. And I love doing these. By supporting me through Patreon, you'll help me maintain the quality of this channel, and you support my work directly. Whomever of you who decide to go with this and join my Patreon page, you'd get access to monthly Q&As I'll host, choose songs for the channel, and more. So click that link below and see if any of this makes sense to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.